Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Ramirez and I'm a cloud engineer at NebulaWorks. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to deploy drone with Helm on Kubernetes. And for those of you who don't know what drone is, uh, it's a simple, easy to use containerized CI CD tool that has a low learning curve when compared to other tools on the market. So drone allows us to define a series of steps that we like our code to go through and it runs each of these steps as ephemeral containers. So the fact that it runs each step as a container uh, makes it a great fit to be deployed on Kubernetes. First thing, we're gonna briefly talk about what Helm is, Helm charts, um, and then we're going to actually deploy drone. Then we're gonna create a drone pipeline, it's pretty cool, and we're gonna leverage that pipeline uh, with an example repository. So you guys need to see drone in action. Um, so there are a couple things, some prereqs, things that I assume you have access to and knowledge of to make the most out of this video. Uh, so the first of those uh, is I expect that you guys have a Kubernetes cluster up and running so you guys can, you know, deploy a drone on it. I'm going to assume you guys have some knowledge of Helm, what Helm is, how to configure it, install it, point it at a cluster, and how to use Helm charts. Uh, then I'm going to assume some general knowledge about Kubernetes, um, Docker, and containers. Really important, I expect you guys to have a version control system such as GitHub, Bitbucket. For this demo, I'm going to be using GitHub. And lastly, you know, you guys should have computers so you guys can follow along. Um, if there's anything in this list that you know you guys aren't familiar with or you guys would like to brush up on, um, check out the links below um, so you guys can you know um, learn more about them. And just also uh, quickly, uh, I deployed this demo with an open source infrastructure as code tool called Terraform. So for those of you guys who are interested in checking that out, um, I've included a link to a GitHub repo um, that has the code. So feel free to to look at it. All right, so let's talk about Helm. Um, so for those of you guys who don't know what Helm is, um, it's a package manager for Kubernetes, and it streamlines the process of installing and managing Kubernetes applications. So we're not gonna be covering the installation process or the configuration process. Um, however, we will be talking about um, the drone Helm chart and you know what needs to be edited uh, in order to deploy a drone with Helm. And if you guys don't know what a Helm chart is, uh, it's basically a collection of files uh, that describe related to set of Kubernetes resources. Um, so basically, any resources that need to be spun up for drone to work on Kubernetes. So we're going to be using the drone Helm chart, and we're going to be going over um, what information we need to provide Helm in order to deploy drone successfully. All right, so that's about it for this portion. Uh, well, now we're going to jump into the terminal portion of the video. All right guys, so we're in the demo portion of the video now. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, integrate a drone with our version control system. So in my case, I'm gonna be using GitHub. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is uh, configure an OAuth application on the GitHub side. Um, so to do so, you're gonna go to github.com, you know, your account. Um, you're gonna go to settings. Um, then we're gonna go to uh, developer settings. Um, so. At this point, I've already configured an OAuth app. I've actually already deployed drone. Um, but you know, to save time, I'm gonna be going over each step um, that I took to do so. Um, so you're gonna have to create a new, new OAuth app. So you're gonna be taken to the screen. Um, you're gonna have to give a name for your application. So we got drone CI. You're gonna have to provide a homepage URL. So this is the page uh, that drone is gonna be accessible at, or, or the domain name. So it'll just be http drone.mathplusu.tk. Um, some of you guys may notice uh, I'm using HTTP. This is just for demo purposes, so we, HTTPS is preferred, right? TLS is, uh, we want that. Um, we're gonna have an application description, so just, you know, drone CIO. Um, and then we have the authorization callback URL. Um, so this callback URL is um, basically um, a call, callback URL that GitHub provides um, to a user um, after successful authentication to GitHub. So um, this is different for every application that you have, but in the in drone's case, um, it defaults to the um, URL drone forward slash authorize. So it's always gonna be that for drone. So we're gonna actually press the register application here. Um, so if you have done that, you're gonna be taken to um, this screen. Uh, so here we have uh, the drone CI application registered um, and GitHub gives us two things that we need to configure drone. Um, it gives us a client ID and a client secret. Um, quick note, 
we guys do not want these secrets available to the public, right? We don't want to put these in version control. Um, the only reason I'm showing them to you today is just for demo purposes. Um, I'm going to revoke all user tokens and just, you know, destroy the app after this, after this demo. Um, so we're going to need these in a sec. Um, so after that, that's all you really need to do. Uh, so once we have these two pieces of information, um, we're going to actually now configure um, the um, information needed for the drone health chart. So I'm going to go back to my terminal really quickly. Um, and so I'm actually going to be creating a values.yaml file. So I'm going to just open it up here. Um, and here we have um, some values that we provide um, Helm. Um, so the first of those being um, a service, right? Um, we have a service of type load balancer, and basically what this does um, is the service of type load balancer creates a load balancer on the cloud platform that you're deploying Kubernetes in. Um, so in this case, I'm using AWS, so it's going to create an elastic load balancer on AWS for us. Um, that's going to be listening on port 80, and that load balancer is going to be forwarding traffic um, to a node port service on the drone being broadcast to that. So it's going to be like in the 30,000 range. Um, so that's all handled for us behind the scenes. Um, we also need to provide it with a host um, name. So I basically just provide the um, domain name that uh, drone's gonna be accessible at. Um, and then just some uh, environment variable values. So specify the provider, right? GitHub, if we're using GitHub true, right? If we want drone open, along with an admin name. And then this is very important. Um, I provide the client ID that was given to us by GitHub, so right, it matches, um, and then uh, the GitHub secret. So if you guys don't include this, um, then drone won't uh, be configured properly, and you'll have to um, update the drone configuration in order for drone to be deployed correctly. So once we have all these, these values uh, specified, um, that's basically all you need. Um, so what we're gonna now do is we're going to um, run a Helm command. So um, this is, I'm assuming that you guys have Helm properly installed, right? And uh, pointing at the correct cluster. I'm actually gonna just check to make sure that um, I'm pointing at the correct cluster. So I have something called kube contacts, um, which just shows me all my contacts. And uh, it looks like I am indeed pointing at the correct cluster. So I'm going to basically run this command called Helm install. Um, and I'm going to specify a name for my release. It's going to be called uh, drone. Specify the namespace that I want this deployed in. So default just to be explicit. And then I'm going to specify uh, a file. So that file is going to be that, that values.yaml file. Um, so what Helm's is, Helm's is going to do, it's going to take the values I specified in the file we just saw, and it's going to overwrite the default values in the drone Helm chart. Um, so lastly, we need to specify the chart we're using. So we're using the stable drone chart. And that is all you need to do. So once you run that, um, if Helm is configured properly and has the correct uh, creds um, to deploy things on your cluster, um, it'll spin up drone. Uh, and once that happens, um, you're gonna get something like this. Um, basically, it's gonna deploy drone, uh, it's gonna deploy its load balancer service, and it's gonna give us an external IP. So um, we have this external IP here. Um, and I'm not showing this in this video, uh, but what I did was I created um, a domain name in uh, Freenom. It's a domain registrar uh, and a domain provider. And I'm basically, I created a C name that mapped um, the subdomain name drone.mapplusu.tk to um, this load balancer's uh, host name. Um, so that whenever you know, people could hit drone on uh, the drone service on drone.mapplusu.tk. Um, so once all that's up and running, um, we can actually go to the drone um, service, right? So I can actually hit it at this name and boom. So you guys should see all of your, oh, so going back one step, forgot to uh, show you guys. So the first time you hit your um, URL, um, you're gonna be prompted with this screen. So it's basically saying, hey, the drone service um, wants to access uh, your, the repositories that you have, you have access to. So in this case, you know, it's gonna have access to a couple of these things. Um, 
And when you press authorize, um, you're gonna be prompted for your GitHub credentials. So you gotta enter those things. And then once that's properly configured, um, you're gonna be forwarded to the screen, which is basically your account with all your repositories. So um, in this case, Drone has access to all my repositories. And so now that we got that down, we can actually create a Drone pipeline and then leverage it with an example repo. So the example repo that I'm gonna be using, um, I have it set up already, it's called Drone Test, so it's right here. So what I need to do to activate it and to um, let Drone access it is I need to press this, and then um, I have successfully activated the repository. I can press this little um, button here and it brings up a uh, page for that repository. And as you guys can see, it kind of did some tests earlier just to make sure everything worked. Um, but if you press this uh, button in the corner here, um, a drop down appears and I go to settings and I can configure settings for this repo. So um, I can configure like what repository hooks there are. So you know, if I want a drone pipeline to run on push, on pull requests, on tags, you can do so. Specify like whether this project's like public, private, things like that. Um, so in this case, you know, this um, project is private and I want the pipeline to run um, on push and pull request. So once I've done that, so now that I know drone can talk to this repo, um, what I need to do is I need to define a .drone.yaml or of a drone pipeline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone this repo really quickly. So let's go to this, uh, so I'm gonna do a git clone and I'm just going to get the, uh, the repo URL real quick. So boom, copy that guy. Okay, so I'm gonna clone this repo down, get in there, um, drone. All right, so we're gonna take a quick look at this repo just to kind of see what's going on. So just a simple test repo. I have some really simple Go code here. I just have a, a Go file that prints um, hello world. So that's in this Go directory. And if I list everything in this root directory, you guys are gonna see um, a .drone.yaml file. So if I open that up, you're gonna see this pipeline here. So we basically define a pipeline in this .drone.yaml file. And you, get, you have to place this YAML file at the root of your repository. Um, so whenever a drone is given a repository, um, it's gonna look in the root directory and it's gonna look for this file. So this is a quick, um, I'm gonna do a quick overview of the pipeline. So um, basically uh, I specify one step here, very simple pipeline, and with this step I'm gonna call it build. Uh, what it's gonna do is it's going to deploy a container with the Golang image and it's gonna perform the following commands um, that I, that I uh, put here. It's gonna CD into that Go directory. It's gonna build um, that Go code that I have in there, right? And it's gonna output a binary, hello. Then I'm gonna chmod it and run it. So each time I push or PR um, on this repo, whether it's a branch, um, like a feature branch master, um, my code is gonna be run through, these, uh, through this uh, process. Um, also, some of you guys may have noticed, I have to CD into the Go directory. Um, so what happens is um, drone pulls down, clones down your repository, um, and then all of these commands are run at the root of your repository. So I have to make sure that I CD into the correct repository to run the Go build command. Um, so since I already have this, um, you know, in my root, um, the root directory of my repository, um, not much you need to do. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a quick branch and add like a little feature to it. So I'm gonna just create a branch, um, so called feature. So now, now that I'm another branch, I'm gonna go into my Go directory and I'm gonna modify my uh, Go code. So instead of hello world, um, so let's see, I'm gonna put drone rocks, something like that. Cool, so I'm gonna add that change, right? Gonna commit it, add it a new feature, and I'm gonna push it to my remote branch. Ooh, origin MR feature. Cool. Um, so if you guys remembered, when I configured the uh, drone test repository, um, I 
made sure that the pipeline would, would be run on push or uh, PR. So if I go back to my, oh, so first off, we can see here that the branch did push successfully. Um, so I'm gonna go to my drone page and I'm gonna see here that this add new feature, so it has my commit message and it showed that this feature just, um, that this test was run 25 seconds ago. So I click on that. Um, and then this is the um, page where we see um, if the tests or the steps ran successfully. So in this case, the first step is, you know, the git clone, right? It, drone will clone a repository into the container. Um, and then we can see that the steps that I outlined um, ran as expected, right? So it's a built um, binary and ran it and the chained drone rocks uh, worked as expected. So um, yeah, that's that's basically it, guys. Um, so that's a simple a drone pipeline. Um, it's as easy as specifying a pipeline in your YAML file, putting that YAML file at the um, root of your directory, of your Git repository, um, and then uh, running the pipeline, or just Git pushing. Um, and actually, one last thing we can do is just to show you guys that this test will also run when we PR. So I'm gonna leave this blank, not best practice, but when I create the pull request, um, we're gonna see that drone has a couple of checks. So we see that, you know, the push check worked just fine, but it's gonna run the same tests over again when I pull, have a pull request. Um, that way I know for sure that, you know, the changes I made um, for this uh, PR work as expected and can be merged to master. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want more information about developing and implementing CICD workflows, please visit us at nebulaworks.com forward slash hashtag contact us.